Well, here we are. Let's talk about 2012. In 2012, I was working in the first part of, last part of, of 11 and the first part of 12, I was working in Texarkana, shutting a project down, and then I was working at Grand Gulf, Mississippi, the Grand Gulf Nuclear Station in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and this is where I was traveling back and forth from there, so all this stuff is happening on the weekends, you need to understand. First part of the year, uh, this year, like any other year, is about cheerleading, competitive cheer. Uh, Elena's team won NCA that year. Here's a couple of pictures. I'm not going to bore you with thousands and thousands of competitive cheer pictures. It's a big deal. It was a big deal in our life. But we went to a lot of competitions, and a lot of those competitions have a lot of pictures that look pretty much the same. So just know that the first part of the year is taken up by that. In, uh, in March and uh, in April, one of the projects that's that Elena had for school was the wildflower project. So in the wildflower project, she had to find all these Texas wildflowers or wildflowers generally and take a picture of them with your finger in the picture so that they know that you found it. And at one point in my Lightroom catalog, I had probably 2,000 pictures of flowers that I have since deleted because we really didn't need them. But here's the pictures of us doing the wildflower search and them coming to visit me in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and we're trying to catch insects and do Vicksburg wildflower stuff. The first really unique and wonderful thing that happened in 2012 was in April. And in April of 2012, the cruise director, Cindy, put together a trip for us to go to the Big Bend, to Marathon, Texas. And Marathon, Texas has got the Gage Hotel. It's a neat old town. It's really not, a, it's an unincorporated town. It's down around Marfa. Uh, and uh, the Big Bend, Terlingua, all those places. So Cindy put together a trip that was going to be me and Cindy and Elena. We were joined by Dad and Susan, and then Ben uh, was stationed at uh, in El Paso. So Ben and Stacy came over with Chloe. So we had us a trip to go to the Big Bend. And the Big Bend trip added several stories to our memories and developing those memories we we drove down there so uh, elena and i had a great time driving down we cindy flew into midland we picked her up and we finished up and we got down there late at night and uh, uh you know a lot of people don't realize how big texas is a guy that i work with is from connecticut he was here a year ago and i asked him what he was doing the last day he was in town and he said he had a nephew that was in the army uh, stationed in El Paso and since his plane didn't leave until like six o'clock he was thinking about just getting up and driving to uh, El Paso and have lunch with his nephew then get back to the airport. I said do you do you know how far El Paso is have you have you planned your trip and he said no and I said we'll call it up on your go and he calls it up on his phone he goes that's like nine and a half hours and yeah dude this ain't Connecticut this is Texas anyway so it's a long trip down there Ben and Stacy come over and that night we get there and it's late at night and uh, we're you know unpacking and wandering around the property looking around and Elena comes back up on the porch and her eyes are this big around she said there's a grave out there I said really a grave yeah so we go out and there is a grave so I'm got an app on my phone that would turn the light on and it was a heart rate app and you put your finger on the camera and the light turns on and it uses the change in color to measure your heart rate and uh, first app I found that had a flashlight so I turned it on and I'm looking at the grave and the gravestone it says dusty on it and uh, the phone because it's a heart rate app is beeping it's going beep 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 and I told Elaine I said yeah it's a horse she said, how do you know it's a horse? I said, because the ground penetrating radar application on my phone scanned it. She said, you have a, you are so full of shit, which is probably true. So we developed the legend of Dusty, the ghost horse of the Pecos from that trip the first night, first hour we're there. We got a, we got a story to tell. The next day we got up and drove around, we went to Marfa uh, and, and looked around, went to Fort Davis and looked around to Fort Davis. Elena got to be friends with a goat while we were at Fort Davis. Um, we went to the McDonald Observatory and then um, they they held food for us the next day. We went down to the Big Bend, went in Big, Big Bend National Park. Um, I found out at Big Bend that they have black bears at Big Bend. Who knew? The other thing I found out is you see these people in Yellowstone that get rolled by an elk or gored by a buffalo and you think, what kind of idiot would do that? 
this kind, I was so excited that there was a black bear. I didn't know they had black bears in the Big Ben. I'm taking pictures of the black bear and I'm walking around the car and getting closer and trying to get a better shot and a better shot. And all of a sudden the bear looks up at me and I'm like, maybe I should go back to the car. That's how people get mauled by bears is because they get so busy taking pictures they're not paying attention. Oops. That same day, we had a, another story that we tell. Uh, there was a storm coming in over the desert and lightning's coming out of the storm and we stopped and we're going to take pictures and Ben takes his camera out and click, looks at the picture. He's got a picture of lightning. So now Cindy wants a picture of lightning. I want a picture of lightning. Got the camera on the tripod. I'm trying to get it set up and trying to find a way to get the exposure down slow enough that you got two or three seconds to get the lightning and I'm taking shots. And so every time there's a bolt of lightning, Cindy would say, now! So I've got, I don't know, 125 uh, uniquely identical shots <laughs> trying to get a shot of lightning. We did finally get one. We went to Santa Elena Canyon. Beautiful down the Big Bend. It's, uh, it, was, it was a great trip. The point of the memory, though, is not only Dusty the ghost horse of the Pecos and the black bear that we didn't know was there and the tree that's a red tree that who knew what kind it was and the Marfa lights and the dinners and all the fun that we had is this is another example of Cindy putting together a trip for us and for my family to go spend time together. And it was a great trip. And it's one that we tell lots of stories out of because it was such a wonderful trip to go down to the Big Bend. And that was in April. And so we have pictures of flowers and we got the pictures of the Big Bend. And then we move through May. I'm gonna look at my notes. Oh, this was the summer of pontoon boats. We rented pontoon boats two or three times. And uh, uh, Mimi would have the boys up from Houston, uh, Chad and Logan, it was like Camp Mimi. And one of the weekends we went out on the pontoon with the boys and, and cruised around on the lake with the pontoon with, with Mimi and the boys. Uh, we rented a pontoon, had Elena and some of her friends on the pontoon. It was a pontoon deal. We went up to Grand Lake. Uh, Jim's family was getting together at Grand Lake. So we, you know, Cindy, hey, family's getting together. We're going to be there. We go up to Grand Lake, rented a pontoon on Grand Lake, and cruised around with my cousins and uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, step-siblings and had a great weekend on Grand Lake in the first part of July. The last part of July was Nicholas and Morgan's wedding. I picked up a daughter last year, 2011, uh, really bonded with one daughter and then here we are in 2012 and I got another one um, and you know while weddings are always special because Cindy was involved this one was especially special she found a, a, a bed and breakfast that had several rooms and so we put she put together a deal where all of us mom and Jim dad and Susan Shauna uh, Lynette Brian, everybody was staying in this one bed and breakfast. It's like we took this bed and breakfast over. So we all had a single place to stay. So we'd get up and we'd fill up the breakfast room with all of us and went around Norman and saw some stuff in Norman. Uh, we had the uh, rehearsal dinner and Cindy and I did the rehearsal dinner, had, had ribs brought in from the rib crib and had a really neat rehearsal dinner. And the next day, put the wedding together, helped them set up the wedding and then had the wedding great wedding awesome time um, a lot of dancing a lot of fun a bunch of pictures here about that but the the key to that trip and the reason that it was such a special memory for me and so much about what our 10 years have been about is that cindy put together that bed and breakfast so that we were all staying in the same place another opportunity to get family together under the auspices of some special event so we could all be together and have fun. So that was in July, we had that wedding. And then the last part of July, we went to Wimberley for the first time. Uh, Cindy and I went down, I think Austin and Elena joined us, we went down. She found a really cool house on one of the creek, on Lone Man Creek. We went down there and had a place to stay and uh, <laughs> Elena locked us out of the house. We, she had to crawl through the pet door to let us back in. We had a great had a great weekend in Wimberley. It's the first time we'd gone to Wimberley. There's several others you'll see pictures of as we go forward. But that was our first trip to Wimberley. It was in 2012. That was a red letter day because we got to go to Wimberley and got started on Wimberley. <clears throat> and then in November, Cindy and I went to Asheville, North Carolina, to go to the Biltmore. And that brings to mind the other story about the Biltmore which was really in 2009 is before we got married it was before the 10 years that I'm trying to cover in this but I got to tell the story because it was kind of cool 
uh, middle of December 2009, we were going to have a Christmas together, and Cindy came over. And the idea was I was going to pick her up at the airport, and we were going to go to the apartment and get cleaned up and then head for the Biltmore and go see the Biltmore all decorated for Christmas. And uh, that morning about 11, it started snowing. And it snowed and it snowed and it snowed and it got more and more serious in the snow. So by the time I went to pick her up at the airport at like 3 o'clock, it was pretty apparent that if we were going to go to Asheville, we needed to head now. So we didn't do anything but get in the car, load up, and head for Asheville. And the snow is going and the snow is going. And we got to I-40, which is usually about a 25, 30 minute, 35 minute trip. And it had taken us an hour and 15 minutes to get there because the snow was so bad and the road was so bad. So I pulled over and I said, look, you know, I've got sleeping bags and I've got food and I've got water and I've got uh, candles and a way to keep us warm. We're, we're not gonna die if we get stranded in the snow, but we might have a really uncomfortable night or two. Do you want to continue on or do you want to you know, call it a day and go back to Charlotte? Oh no, Cindy's in, we're going. She's got Christmas, C we got eight or nine Christmas CDs to listen to and, and, and we got magazines about Southern living Christmas stuff and so here we go. And it's snowing and it's snowing and it's snowing and it's getting worse and worse and worse and you can hear the stuff on the bottom of the car. It's bad, bad bongos. And so traffic stops. We're at this underpass and traffic stops and the North Carolina Highway Department workers are walking up the road going back to the barn because they just couldn't go any further. And they had closed I-40, closed Black Mountain Pass, they closed, the, closed I-40 into Biltmore. The, uh, Asheville got like 23 inches of snow. I should have known when I went to pick Cindy up at the airport and the Weather Channel was there and Jim Cantori was doing a live shot in the median at the highway, on the highway over there. Should have known this is probably going to be bad. So we, we finally get turned around and headed back for Charlotte and it's getting to be midnight. And I had mom on the phone trying to find places for us to stay and Cindy's on her phone trying to find places for us to stay. And all the bed and breakfasts had plenty of space but the first question they'd ask us when we called them is, well, what are you driving? Because if you weren't driving a four wheel drive truck, you'd never get there. <laughs> and we ended up stopping um, in uh, Lincolnton, uh, North Carolina and found a little hotel Comfort in days in, I really don't remember. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down in the parking lot because I was afraid if I got down in there, I'd never get out if they didn't have a room. So I sent Cindy down to see if they had a room. I said, if they got a room, give me the high sign and I'll kind of come down and park. So she goes in, she comes back out, she waves, and sure enough, they, they did, they had a room. But there was lots of people there, and people were talking things like reservations. And the phone's ringing and ringing and ringing, and the lady said, you know, I got rooms. Don't worry, everybody has a room. And there's a lady behind Cindy that's on her phone. And somebody said, boy, that phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And this lady in line says, yeah, that's me. She's just ringing the phone. It's like, it's okay, she's got rooms. Okay. So our first Christmas together was trying to get to the Biltmore. We didn't make it. And uh, uh, so we spent the night there. And then the next day we went back into Charlotte and everything was dried up. It was pretty good and found a great place to stay in the Van Landingham house, which is a bed and breakfast there in Charlotte. Went out to a really nice dinner. We ended up making a great weekend out of it, but it was pretty exciting because we thought we were gonna be stranded in the snow. So since we didn't get to go to the Biltmore in 2009 for Christmas, uh, in November of 2012, we went ahead and made our Biltmore trip and stayed at a great hotel and saw the Biltmore and we had some great food and great meals and did the Biltmore in 2012 in, in November. Um, in December, Josh came over in December. Uh, we had, Josh and I had gone bird hunting at the end of 2009. In this case, we went hog hunting. Elena and Josh and I went out with some friends of ours and we went on a hog hunt. And a uh, uh, great big brown and white hog ran by. I didn't get a shot at him. And then a couple of minutes later, my hog came and I smoked him and the hog fell over. And man, the, the, the echo of the shot hadn't died down. And my phone rings and it's Elena. And she had seen that big brown and white hog. And she said, you didn't shoot my hog, did you? That's my, you killed my hog, I'll kick your ass. So we went, we went on the hog hunt. That's, that, was a, that was another high, hilarious time. In 2012 was the hog hunt we went on, cleaned the hogs up. And then um, at Christmas, we had the kids here. 
and it was the first time we had a bunch of kids around for a Christmas a Christmas celebration because Josh was able to come over and so we had gone on the hog hunt and we did Christmas so here's the story of 2012 it's a continuation of the cruise director putting together trips and putting together activities putting together beds bed and breakfasts putting together homes putting together everything that she could put together to make us and our family everything it could be 2012 Big Ben wedding Wimberley awesome year and that's only the actual third one that we've been together 10 11 and 12 this is how many memories we've created now wait for 2013 it'll be coming out next <laughs>